you are watching Channel 97, Access LaPorte County. Coming up next, the May 23rd meeting of the LaPorte County Council. You can find more information for this meeting by going to www.accesslaportcounty.org. Yeah, it could be. Um, 
because I'm just starting to go through some of them. I, I don't think we will, we will find because we have a couple that we just moved in in the last couple months. They paid one month of rent and didn't pay anything, but I don't know what has happened because COVID is coming around again. So, you know, I need an answer that's happening for months. This one is about to place up a little bit of value on the program. So, do you think you have a time to save when you're going to go to the next year? Yeah, I just, I don't want to overspend if I know I'm not going to get the money. You know what I'm saying? I don't, because I'm going to be meeting with the clients in the next seven to ten days. These are all evictions for June 28th. So, and then I was talking with the attorney. We have some from Normandy also, but Normandy is one of the apartment complexes that does not want to work with us. But seeing that they have a lot of evictions again, I'm not sure what's happening. Uh, I would like to make a motion to transfer of $1 million. I would like a motion to transfer $11,000 to the investment funds. Second. Yeah, Mr. Cunningham said he made a few guesses. He thinks for like a thousand dollars to some kind of question. Any other questions or comments? Thank you for the records. We now have a very good time. I'm going to close the vote. Thank you. Just for the record, the Michigan Township Trust, we are boarded it to everybody. But we received a... You guys got a copy of that. From the Michigan Township Trust, but they had not, at that point, they had not spent any of the county money, so they had nothing to report that money. So, I just want to put it on the side. Okay, and then, um, second of all, I'm going to put my hat to you with our Southern Township Volunteer Fire Department. We would like to thank you for the money that you have for you. I know that you're adding something for the Volunteer Fire Department, so I'm hoping that there's a resolution that's going to go through to help the Volunteer Fire Department moving forward now that the debt tax is passed. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to Stay tuned and show us the budget and council members. Andy Snyder, the first fire department, Chief 809 West 15th Street, the fourth. Um, one of the other hats that I wear is the assistant vice president, vice president of the county fire chief association. Here's a you just mentioned. I'm going to relay to the council the uh, overwhelming thank you for from the volunteer department for that ten thousand dollars first one to each of them. The money for this first at the uh, October the May twelfth meeting uh, about a week and a half ago. And again, um, all very much thankful to you. I hope you'll consider this in the future. Uh, Secondly, back to the LaPorte Fire Department. On behalf of the LaPorte Fire Department and Public Safety in general, I would like to thank you again for your support of the Public Safety Rate last month. And uh, just again, we are very appreciative of your, public, your support of Public Safety. Thank you. Thank you. I'm uh, representing the Coast Bay Volunteer Fire Department. I just wanted to speak to you. James Warren Smith, I'm the Assistant Chief of the Fire Department. I wanted to reach out and thank you guys for the $10,000 check. It will go to good use. We've already pretty much spent it buying new gear for everyone. So and it's very helpful. And thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from the public? Anybody else from the public? Anybody else from the public? Anybody on Zoom? Anybody on Zoom? Any on Zoom? Is your hand up? Public comment is now closed. Moving on to department head reports. Any department head? Surprise. Good evening, Jeremy Sebecki from the Fort County Parks Department. I just wanted to update you on a couple of things. Our playground out at Bloom is, is finally nearing completion. This was a project that started this winter. I mean, it started well before this, but construction finally started this early in the winter. And we stalled out. We had some contractor issues, subcontractor issues, not showing up when they said they were going to show up. And so we finally got uh, a new contractor show up from Virginia to install this playground. Um, it's a very specialized 
installation, as you can imagine, a, a, a big playground like this. So I wanted to also mention we, we originally had a, a ribbon cutting scheduled for June, but obviously we're not there yet, so we rescheduled that for August 13th, so it's a Saturday. Uh, 10 o'clock, we're going to do a ribbon cutting on this um, playground and hopefully uh, get quite a few people out there. Um, also wanted to let you know about how, uh, and I mentioned this at the commissioner's meeting the other night, about how much trouble we're having finding seasonal employees. Um, as of last week, we have one out of five of our maintenance uh, seasonal employees, and that's, uh, we had two at one point, but one decided he wouldn't show up to work and wouldn't call, and so we ended up having to let him go, but um, so we have one, and, and he's great. He's been there for several years, but just he had a heart attack last night, so he's in the hospital, so now we're down to zero. <laughs> so our full-time, our three full-time maintenance people are are doing everything right now, trying to finish this playground installation, trying to, uh, you know, do all of this stuff. So, so we, are, we are struggling. So if anybody knows anybody looking for a seasonal job, Please, uh, they get primarily mowing. Is that and, and so that's the trouble we're having. We have had a few applicants that said, "I just want to mow." Well, we need restrooms cleaned. We need, you know, we need trash picked up. We need, um, you know, after shelters are rented, they clean the shelters. They clean some of the rental halls after that. So there's there's lots of other things for brush trimming and stuff like that. So there's there's a lot of stuff needing done. And and like I said, our right now our full time staff are doing all of it. And um, so yeah, anybody knows anybody, please please let us know. And uh, lastly, I, I, I sent um, a note to uh, Mr. Rosenbaum, Councilman Rosenbaum, the other day about our propane, and he was probably going to talk about this, but our propane budget's already gone for the year. Um, and, and, and basically, the prices are so high that it just it used it up already. And we usually run out right about the end of, you know, our first fill up before the winter. Um, but what, what I what I hope to do eventually is, is fill it up while it's while the while the prices are low in the summer. So I'm hoping I can get kind of an idea of how much money I would need and maybe come back to you in a month or so and see if we can go ahead and, and request that money and get those filled up while it's low. So I'm just wanted to give you idea. And I assume fuel will be the same way here before the time. Um, but if we don't have anybody uh, doing all that other work, then you know, we may not be using as much fuel. Either. I appreciate it. And then that ribbon cutting, that new date, you're going to send that out. Yeah, there'll be, there'll be some information. It's not on that closer to date, but I wanted to give you any right. so, Any other questions for Jim? Would you like to mention the June 7th? The June 7th is our public input meeting for uh, the master plan, and that's at our regular um, uh, board meeting. And it's at 5 o'clock, and we're having that at Bloom. So if anybody wants to come out and see the new playground, um, so there's the growth shelter. Yeah, the growth shelter at Bloom County Park. So that's it. So June 7th at 5 o'clock. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. So just real quick, how many, how, how many are you start in part timers? Um, so... I, I do have, I have one starting, two starting at the end of the week if, if they if they all pan out. They're both students, so they will only last until, uh, or, you know, August, so we're going to be short. We have five positions, and right now we have two starting this week. I need at least three more. How's the guy that had the he, He's doing okay, but I'm just not sure how much he's going to be able to do for quite a while, so... Um, you know, we're going to be, I wish I'd be there. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jeremy. Any other department heads? Can I give a, a report on the tax, uh, reissuance of the tax bills? Or not? Absolutely. I'll go here at the future of Is that okay with everybody? Um, regarding the issue of the reissuance of the tax bills, uh, certified net assessed value has been approved by the DLGF. Budget orders have been received. The tax abstract has been produced. Um, we are at the point where we should be able to produce the, the so-called tab rate or tax rate chart this week, which is the item that gets advertised uh, three times in the newspapers. It's the bottleneck in this whole process. Once that's advertised the first time, it's advertised a week later, and a week later, and then the tax bill can go out. So, um, pardon me, we're mm -hmm. thinking at this point early June, we're working with the attorney here, Mr. DiMartino, as, as you should know. Um, along with the treasurer and the assessor on the uh, matter of waiver of penalties for the uh, main installment of how that would work. <coughs> um, 
And um, so things are moving along with like early June right now. And so the plan is, is that once that date is determined, the, the tax bills are going to go out and say the payment needs to be made on such and such a date. When you guys have that collectively between you and the treasurer and you know, anybody that needs to, then we'll set a special meeting and then we can we can um, waive the penalties through that date. That date is the plan. So, all right? Yes. So that's what we're just kind of waiting for, for, for and as, as the ordinance or the resolution is set by so far for, for that installment only, not previously existing, just for the public, not really pre existing uh, delinquency. <coughs> yep, absolutely. Thank you. Anybody else? Department heads. Any other department heads? Department heads meet. The report is now closed. Ladies and gentlemen, Terry? Uh, no. I talked to my, um, okay. department and everything is ready to. Great. Mike? On May 18th, I uh, attended the commissioner's meeting, and on the 19th, with several of you people, uh, several of the council people and uh, law enforcement and the veterans uh, uh, group, uh, we all attended, a, or many of us attended the veterans uh, ceremony for Wilbur Eugene Lawson, an open house. He was a World War II veteran, and uh, it was quite, a, quite an honor to be there.
required to be able to test our electrical equipment for emissions. Uh, a lot of this is government based that uh, we have to be compliant in certain states by uh, actually 2022 for three states and uh, everywhere else by 2025. So this just uh, allows us to get all these regulations that we got to get done, uh, new equipment, hiring people, and uh, you know, helping out uh, Port County. How are we doing with hiring people? Very difficult. Has um, the state of Indiana been able to help out at all with their, with their programs? At, at this moment, no. Uh, we are doing everything through our HR department from uh, going to job fairs to putting signs out front to word of mouth with our employees to try to get employees. Thanks, sir. Is there any working with Ivy Tech at all? Uh, we have done some uh, job fairs uh, with Ivy Tech and uh, Blue Chip uh, Casino uh, just recently. Okay. And, and just so that uh, everybody gets to hear this, you have down here that um, you're going to spend over $800,000 on the improvements on your property. Um, that you're going to be uh, acquiring $2.8 million worth of um, personal property, which is equipped with different types of equipment you can use to the inside of it. In addition to that, you may mention of uh, looking to hire 10 more people. Um, and adding another $400,000 at least in payroll, and that in turn would give us some money back on those who would be. Great. Any other questions or comments? Mr. President, motion to approve. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Gaskin, second by Mr. Cunningham. Any other questions or comments? We have none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Mr. Bowles? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to new business, consider approval of council president's authorization to hire replacement positions for the Fort County Park Department office manager. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Rosenbaum, second by Mr. Molinar. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. The Fort County Auditor, Accounts Payable Supervisor. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Rosenbaum, second by Mr. Cunningham, all in favor say aye. Um, those opposed? Next one is the Fort County Commissioners of Pottery, Clerk of the Historical Society and Museum Director. So I believe it's going to be the board. I think it will make some recommendations to the commissioners. Motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Rosenbacher, second by Mr. Bainbridge. Do you have any questions or comments? Very none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Right. Those opposed? Thank you. The Four County Prosecuting Attorney requesting permission to hire a vacant part time adult protection service case monitor position. Good uh, This is uh, for, obviously, my ideas and my ideas for the captains here. Um, but this is a part time position. Uh, because that's all we have in the budget from downstate of SSA. We're trying to put in for in the budget uh, periods, which is about three and a half requests for a budget. We're going to be requesting for a full time. Um, but right now, we basically just want to have the uh, process starts so and we can at least interview and be ready to go July 1st. And we'll, we'll start until July 1st because that's when the budget is uh, there. Um, but we're going to hopefully get more money, but if not, it's going to be time. Motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Cunningham, second by Mr. Cunningham. Motion. Questions or comments? Any one on the page say aye? Aye. Those opposed? Thank you, John. Next one discussion on holding back the tally of election day. On the list. Mr. Cunningham. Thank you, Mr. President. I know I've talked to numerous people here that were on our council and other people around. You know, it's just a perception how we handle things in the whole county. This is, this is not just our local media. There was five major outlets that were reporting to other states. And they go, you know, we're some of the poor times to get hold of those folks. Um, I, wish, I wish some of the stuff that came out before. And uh, we would, with that point, we would be able to uh, at least put an input to it. But it wasn't. Um, I asked that night if we could at least go on and use media to tell them what we're doing, how, how much longer it's been. That didn't happen. It's just perception. And there's enough problems with our election department. But we spend more money than we've ever spent on elections. More money. We've got, you can vote any way you want. 
we got a, they got a gang going around, and we have, we have the lowest turn up. That's just the question of people, how they feel about it. And I'm just on that. I've, I've been doing it for 30 years today. I would help other elect people who run for election. It's always fun to have the runners, you get your numbers, you, you have your reports back and forth. It's a, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's embedded into our tradition of this. And so, I would like to say that, that I get to go back to what we, we originally had and move forward with this thing. Thank you. Your opinion, obviously, we don't have control over them. That's what I would like. I don't I mean, like doing stuff that like me is my opinion. I wouldn't weigh in and out. Uh, I'd be able to miss the job. She's not a Democrat or Republican issue. First foot up here, even me and uh, I don't think Democrats or Republicans, either one, were happy on election night. And it could have been um, less than the effect of it, less than the effect of just known in advance. The truth of the matter is, the clerk in her first election must be about to do this thing right, and then she takes a lot of heat because it looks like it's on her and it's not really on her. But obviously, we made a decision after the polls were closed at 6 o'clock. So we weren't going to release figures until later in the evening because she didn't know that or she wouldn't have set up a, a get-together at the city auditorium where hundreds of people were there to hear the results. So I, I just think that, uh, as you said, perception, perception from the outside looking in is added to by the perception of those of us on the inside that expect to hear some results uh, at 7 or 7.30 or whatever. And or... Somebody come down here and talk to these guys that are sitting right here at this counter trying to kill radio time for three hours. And you saw it. Some of you saw that. Yeah, I wouldn't know. Yeah, you're right. You didn't do that again. So if, if, it's gonna, if we're not going to release results until they're all done, people should have known that in advance. They've already gone over and waited for the results. And I understand, I think, from the previous one, there were some, uh, some things didn't come out right. And, they released some numbers that they had to retract and then do, so uh, to be but, but by the same token, the day after these were released, we find out that there were two were voting in the same precinct, but first they were getting problems because but it wasn't a hundred percent of the people in the anyway. Well, by waiting until three o'clock, they had their numbers and 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 they had their President, uh, Nelson, President, 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 discussion on holding back a tally on election night. I, along with Mr. Watterson, have stated several times now that this was a bipartisan decision that he and I made to ensure that the results shared with the public could be as accurate as possible. I stand by that decision. We wanted to avoid any mishaps or issues with providing wrong information, as was the case in 2020, when results were released in batches and the reports were wrong. Although all those issues were corrected and our third-party vendor, Microvote, explained the issues, we wanted to fully avoid anything like that happening again. We felt that sure way to do that was to wait until the end to release any unofficial reports. I will concede that we should have informed the media that we planned on releasing results at the end of the count so that they would have had a chance to properly prepare. We certainly will look to do that in the fall if that decision, if that's the decision that's made. I hope you all understand that the process in tallying votes is not a quick and easy process. We have to retrieve hundreds of machines from across the county, which is by way the largest county in the state by land area. Polls close at 6 p.m. It takes some precincts close to 35 to 40 minutes to get back to the courthouse to turn in all their materials, including the voting machines. We then have to tally all the machines with our vendor microvote. That takes time, and it is a delicate process where many hands must pay close attention to details. As always, we will learn from this experience and improve upon it. In the fall, we will see what we can do to maybe release early vote and absentee voting numbers prior to the final unofficial report. I think releasing those numbers is something that can be done in a safe and efficient manner, and it gives folks some initial reporting prior to all the voting machines coming in and being tallied. Again, please understand the fact that we want to give accurate information in a reasonable amount of time instead of rushed partial results that could potentially have errors. In a time when so many people question election results and believe in half-baked conspiracies, 
you all as elected officials will agree with me that we want to ensure that the reports that we share with the voters are correct and accurate. Thank you for your time, and I'm happy to address any concerns that you may have. Or if you want to call or email me, I'm happy to talk further. Sincerely, Nelson Pichardo, Vice President of the Report County Election Board. Okay. Does anybody have any other? He want, he, so you want to make a comment? Yeah, those are his comments. My comments are, so this is my first election on the board um, in LaPorte County, or any county for that matter. I was appointed right after the fiasco of the 2020 uh, primary election with all these issues. So you have to understand, when I was appointed, I was cleaning up this mess that we were aiming to correct with this. Now, we made the decision, we would have given advance notice, but we made the decision right as the machines were coming in, and it was a lot of machines, too many machines. I think we've learned a lot from the mistakes as far as the machines going out, um, and it's not the, the polling pads, those were great. We had a couple issues with those that we handled. The voting machines we sent out way too many for a primary, in my opinion. Um, so the machines that weren't used, we couldn't just take the poll worker's word for it that they weren't used. We had to tally each one of those. And to do that, you literally have to pull the machine out and go through it. We did that with about 100 machines, maybe more. Um, to address some of the concerns with, uh, I think it was uh, Councilman Cunningham said about the get-together at the Civic. I had no idea about the get-together at the Civic, and I had no idea about the tradition with unofficial results. Would that have changed my decision on the election night? I doubt it. But now that I do know about the tradition and uh, people were very upset with, I get it's, it's a primary, but people were upset because they've been working for a year, year and a half to get ready for this campaign and this election night. So in the fall, um, I anticipate coming up with some type of structure to release uh, early results. Uh, the reason why it was so tough now is because we have one person with microvote who understands the entire system. He's got some assistants that are literally helping count the, the votes and, and that process, but he's the only one who can uh, pull these reports. It would have taken so much time if we did it every precinct or every half hour for him to do these reports, stop counting, and go from there. But we stand by the decision we made, and again, it was it was me and Nelson who made the decision. Heather wanted to release the results early. Um, again, I was appointed right after the fiasco. We wanted to avoid it. This may not have been the way to go. Uh, for sure, I would uh, alert the media if I could do it all over again. Um, I had no idea they were over here killing uh, radio time for three hours. But we talked to them afterwards, and uh, that's that's where we stand on that. So uh, again, I haven't been approached by anybody that has that has been talking to other people saying something was wrong with the decision we made. It's really easy to find me. I'm not a hard person to find. If you want to find out the truth, I've already said it here. I said it at the election meeting. I said it to the media. If you want any other details. Find me. I'm here. I'm, I'm not going to hold anything back. That's not what I'm here to do. But the the thing that really irked me was this, the idea that we were hiding something, or me as me and Nelson were hiding something. It's it's just I not. Think, I don't think that was not, ever implied. I heard it from from some people, but then again, there's Facebook warriors everywhere. Well, there you go. Yeah. So that's that's my stance, and I'd be happy to ask any or answer any questions you guys may have. Uh, now, any other, Richard Galski. So again, I. <coughs> I agree with most of it. I talked to you that night on the phone. So you and I talked. That was me on the phone, darling. Oh, okay. That All was right. me. You and I were talking on the phone. Uh, and that's why I suggested you come down here and present this to the media because you're sitting there, you know, they're sure. heading on. The other part of it, I think somebody just said, with all the talks about the election, that it is perceived that way. When you have national news that's looking for Indiana, you're gonna, this will happen more in general than it was. We're the only state, and it said because of us. It, it wasn't because of anybody else. I'm talking about CNN, Fox, MC, any, all the major ones, in MSNBC. So it's, that, it's not only required by us. It's required, the numbers are required by numerous people, especially in you know, general elections we have over here, where you're going to, our vote affects Lake, or affects um, Porter and um, County and, um, and uh, St. Joe County, because we have left, because we cross areas, as you well know. So, again, I'm not here to, to chastise you, but I'm here to ask that we have a better system because this 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 was a, a fiasco because because people are they think something is going on. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I I I, I, am, I actually deal with a lot of people, make a lot of phone calls. And you know, I've been a runner for the Democratic side. I've called Republicans. We get numbers back and forth. We're, we're everybody's on it. it. It is a long-standing tradition to work at that night that way, and so I just don't want to see it. Happen again that way. That's what I would say. Thank you. Any other comments? Um, one comment you may want to inform Mr. Parker, we are not the largest, we're the largest landmass. 
I mean, in Indiana. My dad in town, who has a lot more people as well. Granted, they are an hour ahead of us, so this is way ahead of ours. So now we're going to get letters from Allen County saying, well, how come you're saying you're the large guy? Yeah. Thank you for quoting Nelson and not me on that. Yeah, so I, I said, uh, you know, I went in front of that was in his letter. Yeah. And, and then the second thing is, if you say there was bipartisan support of the people, you were a public attorney and Nelson is a Democratic attorney, correct? Correct. Well, there was a bipartisan groups of people getting together. For example, Mr. Hyman is back here. He and a Republican judge candidate were at the same location awaiting results. Is that correct, Mr. Hyman? A lot of people were at that together, correct, Mr. Hyman? And that's a bipartisan group as well. So, if this comes down to think this thing through before the decision, you're saying, well, we didn't. Well, you knew how many machines were out to the did I personally? No. I knew after they were all gone and the room was empty that every machine was sent out, but that's not our decision to make as, as the election board. I believe that's the uh, clerk's decision. Could you seal those machines that day and everybody opens it up and that way if the seal, seal's not broken, you, you don't have to worry about the machine? I would have to look into the legality of that, but I mean, that, that sounds like a great idea, but the, we just couldn't accept and yes. accept that I mean, <clears throat> these weren't used. So we but understand. I just look for an idea. If we seal the machines, and then you both, you break the seal when you're there, I think that's a good idea anyway. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah, that's right. I just think that the communication was so bad that we have to figure out a way to avoid this happening in the future. You need to announce two weeks in advance that we're not going to announce the re results as they come in. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
That was the most attended meeting I've ever been to for a Chiefs Association meeting, so we could maybe get that rolled in and get our attendance bumped up, too. <laughs> Mr. DiMartino, would it be acceptable to have one request signed by all 16 departments? Yeah, but when you look at if you're going, if you're going to use the public safety lit monies, there has to be some substance in the request. It needs to be for education. It needs to be for equipment. It needs right. to be for things along those lines. It just can't be a... Right, right, yeah. you, you know what I mean? So, so, it just be, so whether you're going to allocate it by department within that one document, that's fine, but it needs to meet the requirements for the public safety. And each one has to the state what they're using it for. Yeah, what, and training, whatever. Equipment. Yes. Uh, equipment, I, I can tell you right now, they're so short on equipment that that would be the easiest one right there. Yeah, so, yeah. So you understand, do it one letter of each department. Fine. Okay. Thank you. We would be happy to do that. Thank you. We go with that. Support that, yes. All right. So is your motion? Do you need a motion of support for that? Yeah. No. Do you need a motion of support? Uh, yeah. yeah. No, I don't think we do. We no, I don't think so. But it brings the question up, which I discussed, about 
earlier, what are you all going to do with the lit? Are you going to budget that at budget time, or are you going to want the pub, are you going to want the chief association to come back at budget time, just like anybody else that you would be, you know, budgeting for their departments? Or I think the, the intent of this council was when we originally gave them the ten thousand, we thought it was something we should carry on for years and years because they're the first responders. The volunteer fire departments are the first responders in many, many cases. And they're all volunteers. They're not. They're not getting salary. I get. So I, I, I get I, that. I understand what you're asking. Is so I think that we just request they do the letter every January. I, I think it would better off to get in July. I think we're better that we can put it in the budget. Right, because if, if these are going to be tax funds that are going to be used, you know, it's not going to be ARP funds like we've had in the past. That if it's going to come from the public safety lid, it's going to be something that. So we could actually budget that. If we had that at budget hearings, we could actually put that in the budget for this for that year. Yeah. We do it every, annually. It does in July. We do it for that. That's what we do. But every year, yeah, I, I think that would be good because right now, as I just mentioned, those were distributed in May. Um, right. If we continue on that time frame, just bump it out to July with the request. Excellent. Make sure that we enter that in. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so as we sit now, you're going to present something at this year's budget hearing in July. Yes, we can do that. Um, I, I know that there was some consideration that the ARP funds would be used for next year, but if that's not the case, we'll make sure well, that we go ahead. This, and council, this, this, can, this council is probably going to change, so we can't get that commitment right. for next year. Maybe we to. No, we'll be happy to put that together. And, and to make it easier for Mr. Snyder so he doesn't have to come during the day, our next council meeting is the night before the budget hearings. If you want to present that letter hand delivered to the president, we can enter into the budget hearings, correct, Mr. Novak? Absolutely. So on Friday, on Monday night, the 25th. Okay. If that's easier for you, then come on Tuesday. Sure. State your name, please. <laughs> Lisa Pierzakowski, Center Township Trustee. Okay, so my question is so is this in, instead of doing a resolution to show that the volunteer right. fire department is going to each, so they're going to have to request this? Each year, right? So we, it could be that we have a year when we don't get it. Correct. We could we cannot bind future count councils, so there's nothing set in stone. But there's but it is is in the statute that the townships and the departments can petition the council but for those funds. It was also stated by the state that there could be a resolution that the townships were allowed funding also, like with the county and the city that the townships could receive lit money also, but it had to be a resolution done by the county the same time that the lit was being passed. So that's what you and I discussed that. We didn't do that. We're just asking for the letter. Right. So right. what I'm so my question is, it's gonna have to be a letter each year, but it could be one year that they don't receive yes. it. It's so the city and city and county will get theirs every year, but the townships might not get it. That's that's just my question. There's and that's the your jobs mm -hmm. to hold all these people accountable to make sure they do that. And I'll be right there with you. Okay. Thank if you. If I'm on that side, I'll be right there with you. So we don't need a motion? I think we need a motion. Maybe have somebody move. I'm going to need to. So Just, moved. All right. There you go. Second. <laughs> Mrs. Graham Rose and Mr. I don't care. Rosenbaum. So, and the, the resolution is, is that the Chiefs Association can come on behalf of the 16 departments. The motion, the motion is? Not correct. A well, I, did I say resolution? Yep. Yeah. Lisa has you thinking about resolutions. <laughs> Good thing she said that. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Old business, there is none. Appropriations and transfers. Um, Laporte County Recorder requesting permission to transfer monies from the County in Identification Security Protection Fund to the County Recorder Perpetuation Fund in the amount of $76,000. Mr. President, so oh. we have a motion by Mr. Yagalski. Second. Second by Mr. Rosenbaum. Is there any other questions or comments? I do have a question. How much money do you have in your uh, perpetuation fund? I believe it's over 600000 Okay. So just making sure it's, it's plenty of money, and so it's not a big deal. Yeah. Got it. Just to clarify, this is a fund that basically hasn't been touched for years because it's meant to be used for redacting social security numbers and it's pretty much impossible to figure out how much time we spend on redacting social security 
then taking out of it. So that's why the state gives us the option of moving the money. So then it's in a perpetuation fund, and uh, as every year we use quite a bit of it for just you know everything in the office, mm -hmm. saving the yep. county quite a bit of money. So yep. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. All those in favor, say aye. All right. All right. Those opposed. Next time is the Fort County Prosecutor requesting permission to transfer monies from Child Support 4D Incentive Fund, part-time pay, $15,000. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Rosenbaum, second by Mr. Yagowski. Any questions or comments? It would be good if you just give us a minute explanation. Yeah, what, what this is is that we're using two part-time. One of my um, uh, investigators uh, has had a medical health and he's been off, and we have we hired, we brought back Dwayne Miller to do part-time serving of summonses, and Chuck Whelan is also part-time helping out and doing investigations and that. And we only have budgeted $5,000, so we're running through that. This should get us through the rest of the year. And this is obviously money that is hard for us to spend out of the incentive fund. Technically, I'm not sure if I, I think we can spend that money without a council approved, but I'd rather just come here. That sounds pretty sure. sure. Well, so that's what I, I have a quick question for you. How come they share the process servers don't serve your paper? <laughs> well, we're paying them. They do that. And well, I know. I think you're just like, but the thing is, to there. burden them with all this, it would just take too much time. So I don't, I don't, want, to, I don't want to overburden the sheriff. And I don't think they're – I know Heath has now gone to process serving, so we could really have to do that. But my, under, my understanding is they, they have the time. They could handle what you're serving. I'm not sure that I, – I don't think we want to do that. We have a lot of – on these on these child support cases, we serve a lot of people. So, I, uh, I mean, it's money that we, we, we have to spend this money anyway. Out of the incentive fund, we're, this is money. I believe Mr. Yagelsky can find a place for you to spend that money. We had that meeting. We discussed yes, we that. did. I mean, <laughs> so this is one way we're trying to spend it, though. And, and this will will unburden the sheriffs. I mean, we've been doing this now for, for a while uh, since they reduced that and used some of those positions for jail staff. But as you know, I think they're down to Four. Three, three, four. They're eight down to three, yeah. So for them, they've got to do all the civil process. They've got to do everything, you know. So we, we're trying to take that little chunk out of there and help them out. So let me do that. Let us continue. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Next time is the Port County Sheriff requesting permission to increase the salary of the Director of Programs slash Treatment Services Job Classification increased from a PAT 4 to a PAT 6. Um, he has the funds for it this year. He's asking for approval on this. He has the funds for this year, but at budget hearings, he's going to be here to ask for the that increase in next year's budget. Motion to approve. Can we get the amount? Uh, I'll second. Then can we get the amount? Do you know what the amount is? The amount that we're going to be asking for next year or in this year's this right. year's please. Uh, no, we're not going to ask for any money this year. What's the change? Right. What's the uh, the increase in the salary? Um, I sent you an email. I believe it was ten thousand and some odd dollars. Um, and this did go through the mm -hmm. about ten thousand three hundred. Yeah, this did go through the employee. What do you guys call yourself? Um, employee uh, revaluation evaluation yeah. committee. And they're the ones that make the recommendation on this. So, okay. so were, were new tasks added that, that it jumped to um, from Comet 4 to 6? Yep, went from PAT, uh, or PAT 4 to PAT 6. No, however, uh, requirements for that person to do their job, they have a master's degree, and also in comparing the, that person's responsibility to the responsibility of someone in the same position at the juvenile services center. There was a considerable discrepancy in the pay, and uh, we thought what was fair was fair. So that's why we sent it to the finance or the personnel committee uh, for an evaluation on it. I know Mo Monique Thomas is on the line. She should be able to answer some of that as well. Uh, yes, she was involved in this. Yes, uh, we met uh, the job classification committee. We did meet. The longevity of uh, Ms. Walker, uh, Robinson Walker, being in that position, um, we it was it was 
I mean, pretty much needed because of the critical care that she does in that jail and also um, the mental health uh, resources that's needed. So it is, uh, I think that it does uh, suffice what uh, she does. And uh, it is justifiable for in case anybody else comes in that position that we are getting a qualified person, somebody who knows what they're doing, and that they're providing a service to those in jail who are who, who need that. Perfect question, Mr. Yagowski. Okay, no, I think I think, my, I think she might have misspoke. You said there was no, there were no actual increases with education. And you can't give raises to longevity because the next person who comes in gets the same raise. That doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. No, I don't, that didn't have anything to do with the longevity. No, that. no, 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 I, no I'm not saying that. I'm just basically saying, like, what she's done, I mean, what, it's not based on her. It's the position itself. We classified it based on the position itself. We, we, we looked at the whole job description, the previous one that was there. There are some little tweaks and, and, and stuff in that in that job description and there's also that education piece that, that should mirror what that person can do in that jail. So in the committee, what, what was the reason why you couldn't go from a four to a five, why right? from a four to a six? Plus education increase, that's why. No, the, um, the way we did it, we do it on a point system and it went from four to six, that's how it turned out. And um, I think what she meant was the value, was the, uh, 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 longevity is is that the salary is not set you know we set the salary but her longevity brought it up to that amount that would be a ten thousand dollar a month increase right they added that on after they right gotcha. ten thousand dollars a month no no, no. Oh, I got annually yeah person coming in at that level at a pat six they would come in at that entry level where Pat Six is, it's, I think it's somewhere uh, like 40, 52,000 based on that. I'm not sure exactly what's the, because uh, I, don't, I don't have it pulled up here in front of me. But um, I'll get that, I'll, 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 I'll get that, uh, that right in there. Okay. I'll let you know. Thank you. Does anybody else have any other questions? Oh, go ahead. I would also say that uh, you know how critical mental health is, and mm -hmm. we in the jail, unfortunately, are the largest provider of mental health services in all of LaPorte County, and Ms. Walker is the individual that provides those services. She's needed now more than ever, and we're very fortunate to have somebody with her qualifications, her experience, and her dedication to those who are in need and to the sheriff's office as well. I just can't state how important her position is to what we provide in our jail. Thank you. And she's the only one, right? She is the only person that's correct. We have a motion. Was there a second? Yes. Mm -hmm. Who was the second? I was from Mr. Mm -hmm. Is there any other questions or comments? Yes. I have, I have the, the number here. It's $55,389. That's someone who will come in, and that's where they will start. With all that education? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Those opposed? Thank you. Next item is requesting permission to spend from sex offender, sex and violent offender. Motion to approve. Okay. $575.67 for iPads. Motion by Mr. Cunningham and seconded by Mr. Rosenbaum. Yugowski. Yugowski. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Request you're making me speak real fast because you guys are too quick. Request your permission to spend from sex offender violent offender registry fund for the annual payment services of the iPads in the amount of $1,079.24. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Gelsky, second by Mr. Cunningham. Any questions? Any not all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Next item is the Fort County Sheriff requested additional appropriation from Riverboat or ARP. Of both funds for annual payment for the body camera in the amount of $114,545. Motion to approve out of Riverboat. Second. Motion by Mr. Rosenbaum, second by Councilwoman Gramarosa. Is there any other questions or comments? Mr. Oh, yes. Quick question. Um, after next year, would this, if anything came up like body cameras, that, would 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 that, would
I think it's critical that we remember uh, just a month or two ago what happened in Michigan City without body cameras would have been a disaster. And people, they were already arranging for people to be bused in from Detroit and Chicago to protest over some allegation of um, misbehavior by police officers and the body camera saved them. And I think that's clearly, we, we have to think in terms of how much better that protects our police officers. I have a nephew uh, who's a police officer down in Georgia, and when he opens his car door to get out of his vehicle, his body camera automatically comes on. He has to literally call the station and tell him to the body camera off to go into the bathroom. So, in reality, that's the protection they need. I, I couldn't support this anymore. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Next item is purchase of police <coughs> pursuit sedan in the amount of not to exceed 38712 Motion to approve that riverboat. Second. Motion by Mr. Rosenbaum out of riverboat. Second by Councilwoman Graham Rosa. Is there any other questions? And just for point. You're probably going to start to say with Clarifi clarification that this is one car. It is. And did you hold it off? Yes. You have no idea. So that we're replacing, uh, we've already talked to the commissioner's office. We're holding that back for county government. We're not trading it. Uh, it, it as of today, it has 121,000 miles on it. It's in 2017. Uh, we are not getting other vehicles because they did not meet the specs. Uh, when we put out bids, and we received no bids for the pickup trucks that we had. Uh, it was our just to trade in. We're, we're not trading any vehicles. The report that you give us. Yes, we have that done. I just didn't want to burden you since we're not asking for that large lot of vehicles with all that information. I have it. If you'd like it, please burden me. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, it's, 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 but it's also, as we talk today, it's, uh, it's an ever-changing sort of a car breaks down and gets right. I mean, you might keep one back. And so, so things may change on that right, before they actually. So let me let me just make sure that we're right. You want the information now rather than right before we. Okay. okay. It was time for this. Okay. 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 On my computer, anyway. Right. I prefer a YouTube video. Just <laughs> <laughs> saying. Uh, um, any other questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. And those opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Next item is the Port County Treasurer request, requesting additional appropriations for Riverboat or ARP for it, reissuing the tax bills not to exceed $50,000. Motion to approve. On a rubber boat. Second. Okay. Motion by Mr. Rosenbaum, second by Constable and Graham Rosen, not on a rubber boat. Do you have anything you need to add? Madam Treasurer? Uh, uh, yes, just, just one thing. Um, I'm also requesting that um, with this money that you create an overtime account for me. I am, um, as you know, or, or may not know, um, I did not replace two of my employees. So we are working with five employees, two in Michigan City and three in um, LaPorte. And from that, um, we've had 94 hours of comp time just in um, during the tax collection. So I'm asking you for an overtime account to be used just during tax collection, November and May, and now in June. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have um, that 94 hours um, correlates $7,175 of um, overtime for my three girls that worked from the middle of April until last week, last Friday. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and oh, and um, um, racked up some overtime. Mr. President, Mr. Mrs. Winsky, so, uh, Mr. Winsky, did everybody get paid so far up to date? No. 
So we, you, uh, what, what are you talking about, pay? The overtime. You mean the overtime, overtime? No, we don't have an overtime account. So okay. right now I have to give them 90, they have 94 hours. And I, I just, I don't know how I'm going to do that. That's a, a so, lot. That's like 30 hours per right. person. So we did this, we did this with the auditor's office last um, fall and everything. So, um, this is something. Is this something we need to approve now, or no? This is wait till next. This will be on the agenda. So wait for next. For next, uh, Mrs. Winsky. We can just add it to our next agenda because yeah. you're not done. You're not. Might not be done with everything. Well, you know, that's you know. true. I I can mm -hmm. I can have it added to the next right. agenda. I just wanted. We'll take care of it. To talk right. about it. So All I right. have a question. Are they Are they coming in? Are they staying later in the evening? Coming in on Saturdays or? We yes. Yes, everything. This is outside of the we, normal we work hours. We normally work till six thirty, seven o'clock at night, and then they come in on Saturdays and Sundays. They worked on Election Day in the office. Um, th this was a big undertaking this time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Last year we had two part-time people that helped us out, but we didn't have that luxury this year. All right, we'll add that to our next agenda. I got a question. Yeah. Joey, this isn't normal, though, right? I mean, this is just because of this error? No, no, it, it is not normal. No. But it happened in, in November, too. No. It will, it probably will happen in this November, but um, I, I, I really would like to just have it for this year, and if we have to have it again next year, I'll come back. But. Okay. This is an unusual, as you know, circumstance. We're gonna, so, we're going to add it to um, our next agenda. Is it, isn't it true, Ms. Winsky, that the reason that you're having to do some of this overtime is because you've reduced your staff, which is what we want to do. We don't need yes. to have people employed for 12 months a year when we need them for two or three months a year. Right. Yes. All right. So we'll add that to our next more. Thank you. We'll let, make sure you send a request in for the next agenda. Mr. President, just to make note that there will be employees that are all We've, we've had this come before even with uh, Ms. Hale, uh, the two employees, that, she could, that they couldn't get it. Uh, it'll only be certain employees that can, get, can receive this money. Joey can, her assistant can't. Mm -hmm. right. right. Exempt employees cannot right. receive it. Correct. Right. So is this $50,000 now? That doesn't have anything to do with the overtime. No, 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 no. This is like no. postage and yeah. or what? That, the $50,000 is for the postage, um, and it's it's not to exceed fifty thousand. I'm I'm trying to work with uh, uh, the vendor right now to uh, see how how much the mailings are going to cost. If the if the um, if the tax bills get get mailed before July 11th, it's cheaper. And uh, July 11th, the postage goes up to sixty cent per per piece. So I, we're hoping that it, it doesn't go into July. Okay. All right. Is there, I got another question. Is there anything, sure. um, was it DL, who's that? GLGF. GLGF, is that bill in yet or aren't they being going to bill us also for additional because of the mistakes or error? Uh, can you repeat that one time? Is the DLGF going to bill us for any of their, for their help? The, the DLGF won't bill us, but we have other bills that are will right. be. We'll, we'll have a bill from Lau, right. which, uh, you know, that will go through probably through, um, I'm going to guess it will go through IT um, because that's usually who pays their bills. So I'm sure that uh, once we find out how much that is, Darlene will... Uh, come back to you for that. Okay. Um, we're going to have bills from SEH for um, for probably uh, help with the TIF neutralization. Um, we'll have let me see. We'll have publication. Um, hopefully, hopefully, some of the fifty thousand dollars covers some of that. Well, uh, that that has to, the publication has to go through uh, the the um, the publication has to go through the commissioner's budget. Right. right. So. All right. Yeah. Any other questions for the uh, treasurer? So I, I'm sure I'm sure that next month 
um, we'll have a better handle on all of them. All right. We're Thank starting you. to lose you. Thank you. You got oh. your internet's going out. All right. Seriously, I'm not just trying to get rid of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed. Thank you. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Winsky. Next item: uh, the county coroner requests an additional appropriation from Riverboat or ARP for autopsies in the amount of seventy thousand dollars. Motion to approve out of Riverboat. Second. Motion out of Riverboat Second. by Mr. Rosenbaum, second by Mr. Yagalski. I think, uh, did anybody not get the explanation for this? I think we need to, we should share. Would you like to share it with us? Well, yes. Um, the reason I'm asking for $70,000 is to carry us over to the end of the year. Um, the prosecutor has insisted that I do autopsies on all drug overdoses in the county, um, and at $3,500 a piece, they add up very quickly. Um, I've tried to talk to him about his reasoning for doing this because there's not, not another county around us that does. Um, and he stated that they're not able to prosecute a dealer unless they know for sure that the person did not die of a heart attack, but in fact died of a drug overdose. In the 92 autopsies that we've done so far on drug overdoses, there have been two that They're prosecuted. have been prosecuted. Out of those 92 autopsies, 91 autopsies, not one came back that they died of a heart attack or they died of cirrhosis. They all came back that they overdosed on whatever drug it was, and that was the cause of death. That's not to say that taking drugs for any period of time doesn't cause damage to your heart or your liver or your kidneys. It does. So you're going to find that in almost every case. But the cause of death when a person overdoses on drugs is going to be overdose on whatever drug they've taken. And, and with talking with the prosecutor, <clears throat> his thing is, is that the courts, it's hard to prove it in court if they don't eliminate all the other possibilities of death and say, have you looked at all these? I get it. I get it. But right. And we need to. But, it, but even if you say, I, I mean, I still don't understand the reasoning. If you're going to prosecute the person for giving the person drugs, then prosecute him for giving him the drugs. You have enough evidence to show that he overdosed. So showing that he didn't die of a heart attack, but did in fact die of an overdose, you know, I mean, we have a, a forensic pathologist that does the autopsies. You know, I can do a $217 toxicology study that that's how the pathologist determines. So if you want me to have him look at the path, at the toxicology reports and say, yep, that's enough to kill him, I'm sure he'll be happy to do that for a whole lot less than $3,500. Right. Did you have something you wanted to add, Mr.? Yeah, what Mr. Lake needs to do is he needs to rule out any other intervening cause. Right. And so that, under the law, you have to show that there was no other intervening cause, whether it be a heart attack or a stroke or, or, or something else that would have killed him. So it's an evidentiary Mr. Attorney, the way it kind of agrees with that, the problem is the other counties aren't doing that. So. Well, I, but, and I'm not here to advocate for Mr. Lake, and I understand what she's saying, but I'm just saying that that's the reasoning that he's giving. But I'll also bet that those two families, that the two, prosecu that the two were prosecuted, I bet they're really happy that that the prosecution has been done, and I'm sure there'll be more. And uh, I, I don't see a problem with it. I, I'd like to Personally. know how you're, you're an I'm elected just, just official. Thinking, yes. How can another elected official tell you what he you have to do? He is the only person in the county that can force my hand to make a decision. Because like I agree with you. I think it's a waste. I mean, I think two out of 92, the, the numbers just don't add up and make enough sense to me. Um, you know, in the one case, we had to exhume the body. We incurred an $8,000 bill for that that nobody helped us pay because after the fact, they decided, oh, let's do an autopsy. But they did find that person guilty. They did find that one guilty. Mm -hmm. The second one, I'm not even sure who that is because communication never gets back to us. It's just telling me to spend this money out of my budget, but we're not going to tell you how, how everything turns out. I want to make sure I got this straight. 
I think I heard Mr. Molnar say a very factual statement in those two prosecutions. I'm sure those families are very happy. I'm sure they are. But that means there's 90 other families that, aren't that so are happy. very disappointed yeah. because there was no prosecution. Is that correct? Right. Thank you. But possibly that there will be more, I would think. I'm not talking to the prosecutor. I mean, he probably wouldn't be able to say too much about that. I anyway. would certainly hope so. I hope so, right. too. I would think so, So maybe too. we need to obviously address this with the prosecutor. So. Okay. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Nay. So we got two names. Can we do it? You want a roll yeah. call? Roll call, please. Roll call. Councilman Cunningham. Aye. I, I want to make sure that my vote is based on the fact that she's ordered out of her department to do this by the prosecutor. Right. She doesn't have a lot of choice. I don't agree with the prosecutor's reasoning based on what I just heard, but I'm going to vote aye because she doesn't have much choice except to pay for him. Right. Well, then I think we should table this and, and bring in John Lake How short to are explain. You? I think, I believe there's 28000 left for the rest of the year. And my autopsies every month are landing between twelve and fifteen thousand. So if we took so this got till, enough for we got until June. Sure. All right. So now, what would you like to do? Be the person that made a motion. Yeah. We'll I will withdraw the motion. motion. We'll make a motion to table until until next month. Right. I'll second. All right. We have a motion to table until their next meeting. It'll be on our next agenda. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed. Aye. Yeah. You're the elected official. You should be able to. I, 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 I don't understand it. But we tabled this. We're not discussing it. Right? We're not. We'll, 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 you'll be back. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is Laporte County EMS requesting additional appropriation for rear voter ARP retrofit three ambulances with power load cot systems in the amount of $73,574.91. Motion to approve out of ARP. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Rosenbaum, second by Mr. Molinar. Is there any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. LaPorte County Human Resources requested additional appropriation on Riverboat or ARP for the external market salary study not to exceed $20,000. Mr. Yagowski or Cunningham, would you like to give an update on the meeting that you guys had oh finance committee had uh, basically we met and um, the contract as as it was previously written and sent to us was an open-ended portion of the contract and we got them to specify that it could not exceed twenty thousand the way it was written before could have been twenty thousand added on they, they could have came here traveled here charges for all that but right. Mr. That so we kept it is there any is there Motion. Motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Yagowski. Oh, I'm sorry, out of the ARP. Second. Second by Mr. Molinar. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, I have a comment. I think it's the way to do this without getting an efficiency report at the same time. That's just my opinion. Then uh, next month, bring an inefficiency report with the cost, and we'll do That's it. not my job. That's the commissioner's job. But if you want me to do the homework, I'll do that on The commissioners didn't ask for this. I will do my homework. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Next item on the report. You got that? You got, you got I'm clear enough. I just want to make sure. Laporte County Circuit Court requesting permission to transfer money from care of inmates um, to legal intern account. Uh, shortage in legal intern account. The amount of $10,000. We have Judge on the call. So uh, traditionally, when we heard the first 10 years I was here, we used to hire two actual law students as law clerks. With the Valparaiso closing, it's, it's kind, of, kind of hard to find. But we were able to get one for the year, but then we get it. What we've been doing, and it really works out for for the local students. We take undergraduate students who want to go to law school and we give them uh, some work to do during the summer. And uh, they've gone on to get scholarships to graduate from law schools and it's done, they've done well. Um, we need some money and, and the fund to do it. And the reason why this is the appropriate way is uh, <laughs> most of what they do is dealing with a lot of the 
uh, requests we get from our two prisons. Uh, we get a lot of lawsuits. We get a lot of, uh, please waive my, my BMV fines. We get a lot of habeas petitions, et cetera. And um, we've, through the years, we've been able to get it down to a science and, and be, train these kids on how to do all the grunt work for it. And uh, in the past, we've had other sources for the funds. But this year, we just want to transfer from this fund that we always have money left over at the end of the year. Thank you, Judge. Mm -hmm. It's your pleasure. All right. Motion by Mr. Cunningham. Second. Second, Second matter. by Mr. Molinar and Mr. Rosenbaum. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, council comments. Is there any council or attorney comments? Anybody have anything? I have a council uh, comment. I just want to point out that, that I think we all received this sheet in our uh, packet. On tonight's agenda, there were $366,831 in additional appropriations, and we're only in month five. If you multiply that figure by 12, that's over $4.5 million. And it's my estimation that this will go higher. If this 366000 we spent tonight is going to keep creeping up every month because of fuel costs and food costs and everything else. Um, we just need to be prepared when we work on this uh, 23 budget. We understand there's an inflationary factor of well over 10% at this point in time. Especially with the fuel, because years ago we had the fuel cost was, was high, not quite as high as it is now, obviously, but um, it was very high, and then the fuel then wound up coming down, and we had surplus, but we were adding to the, everybody's budget there for a while. I'm, I'd like to second, his, if I may, I'd like to second his point, especially with the notion that the, your growth factor is tied to the new money you collect for the general fund is tied to the prior five- or six-year increase in non-farm income. So as inflation goes up immediately, your costs go up immediately, but your new money you collect on the property tax is a lagging factor because it's being averaged over six prior five or six prior years. You had an important point. Definitely. Any other comments? Is that a motion to adjourn? I motion guess? to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 That was a.